Have you made the decision yet? Kevin Hart's new book is all about overcoming today's BS to, you know, get tomorrow's success. And he starts the book off and he challenges us all to throw out our ugliest, crustiest shoes. These are mine. These are my gym shoes. I wear them every day when I work out. But I am going to make the decision to throw them away and start my new life with these shoes that I purchased that look the exact same way. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The point is that you're starting a new life and you're starting the journey into taking over what is yours, meaning your life. You're given one and you should live it to the fullest. And Kevin Hart presents us with this opportunity to really kind of intimately talk with him and understand his success. Now I realize like, Life. I'm Brianka J. I'm talking everything lit. I do book recommendations, literary analysis, and reviews Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So if you like what you're hearing now, go ahead, press like, comment, subscribe. I will be here for the long haul, baby. I'm lacing up my new shoes because I read The Decision by Kevin Hart and I'm ready to start my new life. Let's get into it. Now I realize like everybody don't love, love Kevin Hart. If you don't think he's funny, you have an issue with his relationships, you have an issue with his business, you don't like what he said about the gay people for the Oscars. I get it, I get it. But what you need to think about is, is he successful and can you learn something? Because even a broken clock is right twice a day and this man ain't broken. Like he is a very highly successful individual. And regardless of whatever scandals, or whatever kind of information is out there, I think it's important for us to start making our minds allow new information. When we refuse information based off of the things that we hear about people, you not hurt nobody but yourself. You're hurting yourself, dear. That's who gets hurt. But let's talk about the decision and why it's important that we make that decision. Right? Yeah. That this book is about you. This book is not about Kevin Hart. Thank God. Love him, but it ain't about him. Thank goodness. It's about you. It's about me. It's about reaching our highest potential. Whatever your goals are, he is trying to set up an opportunity for you to reach them by opening up your mental space to allow it. So the first thing he does is he structures it in a really cool way. So if you read business books, if you read self-help books, then you know you're going to get the standard, this is what I believe you should do. And then, for example, this person did this and saw this result and that's why it works. So it's that same typical structure, right? Now the difference is he is, I want to believe he freestyled in there. Like it's not a um, actual physical book, so I don't think it went through drafts. But I'm not quite sure how he produced the work, but it sounds organic like a conversation. So he brings in jokes, he keeps his typical humor, and at first it was like a little bit like, uh, why? But over time, it, you, you got more comfortable and you're listening and you're like, hell yeah, like, yes. And then, as he says, the whole book, he's dropping gems and crispy golden nuggets. It's how he puts it, like he's dropping gems and nuggets. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I listened and I enjoyed it. It's about six hours long. Guys, he is really trying to help us. Like, he is talking about a lot of the mental blockages that stop us from performing to our, from our, blah, blah, blah. He talks about the mental blockages that stop us from performing at our highest potential, whether it be people talking about us, friends, laziness, lack of discipline, uh, discipline, lack of eating right, or what have you. Like, he wants to address those things. And he's like, look, yes, that happens. That's human. That's a part of your human ability. And it's not an excuse to not perform. Yes, so, yes, there are things that slow us down. Yes, there are debilitating things that make it difficult for us to be our best selves. But who that's gonna stop? Not me. Mm-mm. Because I just went to Kevin Hart University, Kevin Hart Boot Camp, and I understand that just because it is a part of the human in me 
doesn't mean I can't overcome it. So that is one of the first things that you start to understand. He starts to break down some of the blockages and mental barriers that are stopping us from success. And it's like important and it's valid and it's, in, and it's real. Like anger and jealousy and perfectionism, like the things that get in self-doubt, judgment, all the things that get in our mind that slow us down. He's like, look, we're gonna throw that out and then I'm gonna introduce new ideas. And I was like, okay, all right, okay. So we leave all those things out and then we go into orientation of our boot camp. And then we have like a pep talk and weapons training and he produces the essentials that he believes that every person needs in order to be successful. So I'm just gonna read off um, the 15 things that he kind of touches on that he believes are necessities to our success. A positive mindset, what isness, like, he makes up a lot of words here. That's his thing. We're going to go with it. What is this? Consistency, reliability, determination, cowboying up, teddy bearing, dissatisfaction, non reactivity, self generating power, sponginess, relatability, eye on the prizeness, put up withness, and humility. So yeah, these are these are 15 things that he says that every person should have to be successful. And you probably heard some variation of this if you read these types of books. Like we read the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you've read like Rich Dad Poor Dad, any of like the books that kind of help us get our shit together, he's not straying from those same ideas. One thing he says though that I I felt a connection with was the idea of um, sponginess. He says sponginess, but it's really the idea of allowing people to teach you. Never being so big, so arrogant, so prideful that no one can teach you something. He says that everywhere you go, there's a learning opportunity and every failure, there's a learning opportunity. And when sometimes I think people make the mistake of cutting off receptors to listen to people based off of their assumptions of that person and don't get the lesson. I'd be like, well, that's a waste of my day. I want the lesson. Regardless of who you are or what you got going on, even a broke clock can teach me something twice a day. In fact, I was listening to Brad Pitt um, talk through a recent interview and he was saying that when he was coming up, he actually did a weird job where he would drive strippers to bachelor parties and he said it was in the car with the stripper that he told her like I want to be an actor and she was the person that introduced him to his first major break it'd be like that like I think sometimes we'd be like oh she a hoe or oh he a cheater or oh he this or that or just a human because at the end of the day they're just human but then you're not listening and you're not receiving the information you need so that you can be everything that you're jealous that they are. Like, come on, get about your feelings. Like, just don't do that to yourself. Don't cut yourself off at the knees, B. You know what I'm saying? Past that, beyond that, if, like, that's a good one. But then he also talks about cowboying up. This is about, like, taking accountability. And then when he's talking about it, I'm like, yes, like, Kevin Hart does always take accountability and he talks about why and he's like when I take accountability it stops it stops the reaction it stops the argument like I did that and then it adds to people's respect for you by saying I did this thing and it was a bad decision on my part and I am sorry you allow people to connect with your mistake and connect with the authenticity of being a person that makes mistakes so accountability was beautiful and he talks about teddy bearing and this is the idea of always exuding love and positivity and support when you are out and not to get people to like you he says it very plainly not for people to like you but because it brings in a, a karmic effect right like when you are out or you're bringing your best energy your best self people are drawn to that and I love that because I know a lot of times we don't see that a lot more on the internet and stuff like that. And I, I like his principles. So after we do that, we get to this part where we talk about our mental fitness. 
And he talks about the things we need, the work we need, the solitude, the environment, the people we have around us, what we allow in our minds, what we feed ourselves, and how we wake up in the morning. And I love this too. Like, it was good because it was like, yes, 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 yes. Like, if you follow me on Instagram, and you should. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I talk about daily habits because right now it's important that we start grounding some daily habits in so that we don't find ourselves depressed or uh, spinning without a compass. And so he talks about his daily habits in the book and about getting up in the morning, feeding yourself the best, keeping a home, you know, that is, that is peaceful, keeping chaos out your life keeping negativity out your life if it's the social media that we consume or even the people that we allow around us like some people have truly been around you your whole life and they are not good for you and so he talks about that and then he brings us to he's like now you got it all he says after you get all these things you know you're good and you're gonna go out there but you got to get to the front lines and he talks about some of the things you're gonna face in the front line other people's opinions failure success obstacles, exposure, achieving the impossible, being wrong to everyone else but yourself. Um, and he talks about these are the things that you start to experience once you reach any type of success and how to continue to stay mentally prepared for these things. And when you know what's coming, you can be prepared. So I loved it. And he talks about victory, like what we're fighting for, how we're fighting for ourselves and how we can begin to reclaim our life by taking on these attitudes and qualities. We can change our life. Like, that's amazing. That's amazing. So I, I just loved his book. It was so funny. It was so cute. Like, it was funny in a way like it was Kevin Hart. So he was trying to tell me what I need to know to get through my week. And I read these books every week. But this one, he, he installed jokes, he tried to be relatable, he made it very intimate. I felt as if I was really in a car ride, just me and Kevin, and he got an opportunity to just like let it all off his chest. And it was cool, like I, I love that it wasn't over edited, I love that he didn't even write it to take away from that uh, plug and play system that I usually see when I see the celebrity books. This book, I enjoyed. I went out, I bought me some new shoes, I'm going to lace them up, I'm going to wear them, and I'm going to start my new life. I'm going to allow the principles that he said to, to manifest themselves in my life. Why not? Why not? The high points was I was able to get up, I was able to stay focused, I was able to keep my vision nice and crisp, which is always why I'm reading these types of books in the first place. And one of the best things he told me was, hey baby, you're human. I feel the same things you feel, and I choose every day. And by talking about his life being a choice, I remember that my life is a choice. And I hope that you guys read it. I hope you guys are ready to lace up and take on your new life as well. The decision is highly recommended, I would say, for anybody who is tired of their own shit. If you are tired of being at that job, at that place, doing that thing, dealing with that guy, dealing with those friends, this is the time. This is the book for you. This is the book that's going to take you where you need to go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, of course, I want you to follow me, uh, subscribe to my channel, press like, leave a comment, and let me know if you enjoyed the book as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.